Hi, welcome to Aussie Kicks. On today's show, well, we're back working on the Rock Soccer from Tamiya. This is the CR-01 Crawler Chassis. Now, if you haven't seen the build video for this, um, I'll put a link up here, go check that out, as there's no point really watching this until you've seen that, as I built up all the chassis in the previous video. In this video, we're gonna finish painting up the body, getting all the decals on it, as well as fitting all the electronics and bringing it to life and basically calling it done. It is some snow outside, so if I can get it done quick enough, I might be able to get some running footage of it as well. So uh, wish me luck. Right, let's crack on and get this one done. So after a good few hours masking, this is where we're at. Now I've masked off the bars individually. That was a complete nightmare as it's right up inside this section here. So yeah, not exactly easy. Then I uh, masked off the rest of it as we're going to do black first in these areas. Again, very challenging because getting this line straight when it's right up inside this lip from the underside, not easy. Then I've masked off everything else. So we're going to do the black first. Then we'll mask off the windows. Then I'll do it gray and then uh, so gunmetal gray. After that, I'll pick this off and then that will be red. And then I'll back it all in. I might back it in white just to keep the red popping and then I'll back it all in maybe black. So we've got a lot of work to do. So let's crack on and fingers crossed. What I'll probably do is I'll put some clear on first to make sure that I don't get any creep. And then uh, hopefully that'll keep it nice and sharp as there's a lot of curves in here. So wish me luck. So I've laid down the black after using PS55. I put three layers of that down first. That's just flat clear because this is quite a complicated and I didn't want any bleed throughs. So I did that, then I backed it in black. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove all this around here and then we're going to paint it in red. The color I've decided to go with is PS15, metallic red. It's a little bit darker because matching it up to the decals that come with this, it's not bright, bright red. So I'm hoping that that's the right guess. But that's what we're going to do next. So the first thing we're going to do is take all this off. And if there's any bits that need clearing, cleaning up, we'll do that. Right, so it didn't need much clean up at all. And I've removed all the masking. Taking it off is a hell of a lot quicker than putting it on. There was only two little bits that I had to make sure were bang on that I had to replace. That was one bit there and one bit there. Um, I might be a little bit of touching up to do. Underneath that might be a bit clear. But it's easier to touch up black over in the inside afterwards whereas if i left it off the red would come out which i don't want at all so now we've got to put down some ps15 but what i'll probably do just to be on the safe side around these areas i may do a couple of ps55s again just around here because there wasn't going to be much chance of hiding that and if that's nice and sharp it will make the body look much better like here as well getting these bang on is important right let's crack on and do the red so we've made some progress. It's all now in red. And I've also backed it in white. It's just drying. Next, what we're gonna do is take all the masking off, cut out the window mask and fit them. Then we should be ready to paint it gunmetal gray. So let's get all this off. If there's any cleanup that needs doing, I don't think so. I'll sort that out at the same time. But it's coming along. Right, we got that done. That was easy enough <laughs> until I realized that I actually supplied the two windows and I made my own. But hey, never mind. That'll teach me not even to bother looking at the window masks. But now we've got to do is just blow it all in gray. The only thing I'm not overly happy with, not quite sure what happened, this black line here is more sloppy than I'd like it to be. But it being that it's gunmetal gray, um, I'll see what it's like once it's all blown in gunmetal gray. If I'm not happy with it, what I'll do is I'll use a very fine black edging to go over the top to clean it up if I do that. But for some reason, the edging tape uh, kind of lifted a little bit and the paint kind of got underneath, which is a bit weird. But uh, there we go. So it's not the end of the world. The rest of it's OK, reasonably sharp. I blended in a little bit of shadow down here as well to make it a bit darker. Um, and then I put a little bit of shadow down here as well and a little bit here and here just to make it a little bit more interesting. I don't know if that shows up on camera. That was just a bit of smoke. I just blew a little bit of smoke across the bottom there because obviously this is supposed to be lower, you know, so to make it look a bit more like it gets darker down to the bottom. 
But all in all, that came out right, but masking it up was a bit of a pain because when you flip it over, you realize how deep inside all that is. So that was it. I backed it in white now so that hopefully it will stay this vibrant. I don't want it to get any darker than that. And then uh, once I blow over everything, gum it will grey, it will look all uniform. So let's crack on and get it done. The bad news is it's dark outside. So that's all the gunmetal grey laid out. Came out okay, as far as I can see, no issues, but until we remove the protective film, we won't know for sure. Next we've got to do is we've got to remove the wind masks, then I'm gonna smoke the windows a little bit, then we'll remove the outside mask and then put on the decals. So we're getting close to the end now. So let's crack on and get it finished. So it's coming along now. I've done the smoke in the windows and I've removed the protective film. All in all, reasonably happy with it. Didn't need much clean up at all, really. And while that was drying, I've cut out all the decals. These, not that many for this one, mainly these big ones, obviously you have to be careful to get them to line up correctly, but it shouldn't take too long. So all we've got to do now is finish that and then get the electronics in it. So there you go, I'm gonna call that one done. Not that difficult to be fair. The chassis was a bit more of a faff, mainly due to the amount of different size screws that there was in the actual car and having to check all the time to make sure you had the right one as it was very easy to use the wrong one. I've thrown electronics in it and we basically put all the decals on and finished it up. Painting wise, it's not that difficult at all really. You don't have to do the roll bars like I did. You can just use the supplied stickers. If you do that, it's actually very easy. Um, you just mask off for the back, put the black down, and then you just paint the whole lot black at the back, and then you do the whole resting gun metal, and then you're done. Sticker-wise, they are pretty easy. There's only two you've got to be careful of, and that's the ones on both sides. They are quite large, and the thing that will catch you out the most is that there is a ridge in the door. And when you go to put the sticker on, it wants you just to lay the sticker down. If you do that, you will not get the ridge. You will bridge the ridge. And then if you try to push it in, it will never go in properly and it will keep popping out. So the only way to do the ridges properly is to come down with the sticker. And then as you roll it down, you roll into the actual uh, cut out. So that makes it a little bit more tricky to line up because you kind of want to do two sides at once. So the way that I did it, was I stuck it down at the end by the front of the door shut. Then I removed the top bit and I laid it down to get it correct across the top. And then I worked down the door. That way I could actually put the decal into the groove. But it is a bit tricky because you're trying to do like three things at once. So just be careful. And I'm pretty sure if you stuff that up, it's such a big decal, taking it off, you're going to damage it. Also, it is partly clear as well. So if you're peeling it off and putting it on a few times, you're going to ruin it. So just be careful with that one. The rest just go on really, really simple. Um, no issues at all on that one. I've thrown electronics in it. I found a uh, half height, a um, low profile servo, whichever you want to call it. It's 20 kilos, so it will easily run this. No problems from that side. Electronics, there's quite a lot of space in there, so you won't struggle to fit your electronics. The only thing I did find is the motor's all the way at the front underneath, and it's quite far, as well as the servo uh, cable running all the way to the back is a little bit of a challenge, but there's quite a bit of space in here so you can kind of get away with it. There's still snowing outside, so I guess we can charge up the batteries and take it out. Oh, one other thing, a lot of people wanted to know roughly what kind of size it's like, because on the box it's hard to judge its size. So I've got my daughter's lunchbox. So there you go, to put it into context, it's probably a little bit lower, but you can raise the body up. I've actually got the body set as low as I can get it. But if you turn it that kind of way, you can kind of see it is kind of sporty. It's more of a crawler, but it does look a little bit more like a monster truck, you know, but it is actually a dedicated crawler. Could you put bigger wheels on it? Yeah. Could you make it into more of a monster truck? Yeah, you could. Um, so there you go, that's the kind of size you're looking at. Wheelbase, it is quite a bit longer than the lunchbox. Right, let's take it out and take it for a blast in the snow.